Hi, in this short video, we're gonna see some of the equipment, some of the processes railroads are using to replace their railroad ties. Most people think, well, they'll just knock all the ties out and put new ties in. But that's not exactly how they do it. They don't just pull every tie out. They will look for the worst ties, but then they only go every three, four, or even fifth tie. The first thing they have to do, of course, is pull out the spikes. This machine does a real fast work of that. This project was from Dupo, Illinois, all the way to Washington, Missouri. That's 50 miles, over 50 miles, one way. Then the crew is going to turn around and do the other main line on the way back. So this machine here is pulling out the old tires. Ties are in service from a few years to longer, depending on the types of load that are on that line. Notice how this machine actually lifts up the rail. I'm told that if they pull too many ties out, the track can start to wigwag back and forth. As you can see here, gathering up the old ties, you just can't leave them all laying by the side. There's quite a few in the past. Some of these ties are bound for the dump. Some are bound for a local landscape shop. You might end up putting this in part of your landscape. Railroad ties always been a favorite. You have to wonder about this type of work. It can get monotonous. The crews are made up of people, in this case, the Union Pacific. They're from all over the country, and they will work about a week and then have six days off. And they have to find their own lodging, and provide their own food, but they're on per diem, and I'm sure they'll do just fine. Gone are the days of John Henry and the section gangs Picking ties up by hand. These are much more automated. Now this main line had to be shut down for this work, obviously. So now instead of two tracks, double tracked, we're a single track. And work still goes on on the railroad. They can't reroute all their traffic. And trains, when they do come through, have to come through at a slower, much slower speed. And uh, this gives the work crews who repair the equipment an opportunity to do some repairs and maintenance. Believe me, after a day on the line with these machines working hard, there's plenty of things that need to be calibrated, adjusted, or repaired. And it's dangerous work. One false move here, and this guy could get hurt. I understand they have a pretty good safety record on the Union Pacific, and they want to keep it that way. Well, this machine I affectionately call the John Henry, but it's a spike driver. It's just amazing, the specialized equipment and how it is so precise in what it's doing. They have to find the high plate hole and then drill that spike right in there. Now that the ties uh, have been spiked, this machine goes along and just aligns it a little bit more, getting it just so. You have to wonder, after work on a main line like this, how the next few trains through will, will fare. Will it be smooth like a new set of tires, or will it be a little uh, bumpy as the ties settle in? I imagine it could be a little bit quicker. Now 
Now the rock around the railroad is called ballast and it has to be rearranged. This little machine is definitely spraying the rocks around. And then finally, That's the same machine puts out its grater and pulls the ballast back up over the ties. And as trains rumble along and vibrate those, the ballast will settle in and firm up. Sometimes while it's in this state of being worked, it's very uh, treacherous for the crew to walk around on that ballast because it gets way more easy. Just like farming, this equipment leaves the track looking really nice. And we'll just call it clean and fresh. And ready for the railroad. Move that freight. These commodities that we all depend on.